Mary, it's always good to have you here. It's great to be back. Yes, yes. So we're going to talk about attracting butterflies, right? And I know you like this topic a lot, don't of you? Of course, yeah. Butterflies are some of my favorite insects. And yes. so um, we're going to talk about some ways to attract them okay. to your yard or your balcony or um, to one of your favorite outdoor spaces. Okay, good deal. So let's start with the first question, right? So what is the difference between butterflies and moths? Okay, so we're going to get into talking about how to attract them, but I think it's important to kind of understand them a little bit first. Good. So butterflies and moths all belong to the order Lepidoptera, okay. which means scaled wings. So when you look at butterflies and moths, they're covered, their wings are covered mm -hmm. in scales. Most of the Lepidoptera are actually moths. So moths That's get such... kind of a bad rap, but there <laughs> are a lot in the United States. There's about 12,000 Lepidoptera, about 11,000 of those are moths. Wow. Um, and then the rest are butterflies. So we're not going to talk too much about moths sure, today, sure. but I just want to <laughs> point out a couple that they, um, there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, I had no idea it was that many. Yeah. yeah so that's good. That's and good. There, there are some ways that's a common question we get. How do you tell the difference yeah. between them? The more we learn, the less differences we see, right? Okay. Okay. So, but there are some general differences and some exceptions okay. to those. So the first one that most people think about is moths are active at night, butterflies yeah. are active during the daytime. There are a few daytime flying moths. Okay. Um, the clear wing, hummingbird moths, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, those uh, are visiting flowers during the daytime, okay. but technically a moth. Second difference that a lot of people talk about is um, color. Most of the time mm -hmm. you think butterflies are more colorful, and they are. A lot of butterflies are really colorful, but there's a lot of moths that are colorful as well. Oh, that didn't know that. The hmm. best way to tell is actually looking at their antenna. Okay. So when you, a okay. butterfly is going to have a club-like antenna, and a moth is going to have a feathery-like mm. antenna. Okay. And that's the best way to tell the difference. Again, there are some exceptions that you can get into, but um, for most people, seeing that difference between a moth and a butterfly. Wow. Now, one other mm. difference that sometimes comes up is a cocoon and a chrysalis. Okay. Okay, so there is a difference. A cocoon is what a moth forms, okay. and a chrysalis is what a uh, butterfly is going to emerge from. Got it. So Got it. when we talk about butterflies, we're going to be talking about chrysalis. Okay. Which kind of leads me into the life cycle of butterflies. Okay. And that's going to be important to know because when we're trying to attract them, we can attract them at different stages. So we want to incorporate different plants along the way. Okay. So life cycle, typically eggs. And for butterflies, they're going to be laying their eggs on a host plant. A host plant is what the caterpillar is going to be eating. Got it. So we've got egg, caterpillar, then we go into the chrysalis stage, and then finally what emerges is going to be our adult butterfly. Okay. So complete okay. life cycle. Sometimes that happens in one season. Sometimes it happens over uh, two seasons. Got it. Okay. That's good. Um, and the reason is um, butterflies have to, it has to be at least like 60, 55, 60 degrees for butterflies to become active. So that's why we're not always seeing them in the wintertime. And that's why we don't see them in the wintertime. Yeah, mm. and there's different strategies that they use to survive the winter. Okay. So we've talked about monarchs before. Monarchs are gonna be migrating. There's a few other butterflies that are gonna migrate to warmer areas. Mm. Some are going to overwinter in the egg stage some overwinter in the caterpillar stage, a few overwinter in a chrysalis stage, and then there's a couple that actually overwinter as adults. One of those okay. is a morning cloak, and morning cloaks are overwintering behind tree bark. And so they're some of the first butterflies that we see sometimes in the Mid-South as early as February. The more we're learning about butterflies, we're seeing just a variety of overwintering strategies. How about that? All right, so what are the type of butterflies that we need to know about, right? Okay, so when we get into attracting butterflies, um, there's basically five different groups of butterflies. The first one is swallowtails. Mm -hmm. Those are the mm -hmm. big um, showy ones, mm -hmm. and they all have these little tails. <laughs> um, and the swallowtails are interesting because a lot of them are named after their host plant. Okay. So we've got spicebush spice over bush, by you. Right. Um, spicebush is a host plant for spicebush swallowtail. Okay. Okay. I like it. Yeah, yeah. so that's an easy one. Um, parsley, there is the black swallowtail is going to go to things in the carrot family. Okay. But they'll also utilize herbs like parsley and dill and okay. fennel. Um, and you can get the caterpillars on those. 
So those are swallowtails. Swallowtails, okay. Then we have a group called the whites and the sulfurs. Those are the, like the white, yellow, orange butterflies um, that you see, kind of medium size. Um, and those, if you are growing any sort of broccoli, mm -hmm. cauliflower, yeah. you probably encounter those probably as well. Those. Yeah. Yeah. So the cabbage those. whites. Yes. Um, but a lot of those are going to different types of legumes as well. So right. if you want to attract those, you're going to be looking at um, some legumes. Okay. Now the other group, this one is really interesting. This is gossamer wings. Yeah. And these are, they're all about the size of a nickel. Okay. And Small. a lot of them have blues um, and greens in them. But this contains one of the most interesting caterpillars um, in North America. All right, okay? let's, let's hear it. Let's okay, hear it. All right. <laughs> so we think about caterpillars most of the time they're eating some sort of plant. All right. But there is one carnivorous caterpillar, and that's the harvester. And the harvester they, um, is a caterpillar in aphids clothing, okay? Uh, <laughs> so the okay. eggs are laid among aphids, and as the caterpillar is developing, he's actually eating those aphids but he's disguised, so the aphids think he's one of them. Um, so that's pretty cool, though. That is pretty interesting, uh, uh, a carnivorous okay. caterpillar. Yeah. How about so, that? Yeah, so that's in the gossamer wings. Okay. And a lot of the that's gossamer cool. wings also have relationships with ants, and mm. um, just like ants can protect and harvest aphids. Yeah, um, for the honeydew. Yes, okay. yep. So right. the um, some of the chrysalis and, um, have make a squeaking sound that sounds... <laughs> you know, like an ant in distress or something, and so the ants tend to them too. What? So, How about that? I know, in, pretty interesting that in the gossamer wings. Okay, um, yeah, how about that? Then we get to the brushfoots. Okay. And the brushfoots is kind of a catch-all for a lot of different butterflies, like our monarchs, our viceroys, um, okay. and all of these actually have furry front, front legs, mm -hmm. um, which is how they're kind of grouped together. But there are a lot of different ones, and so if you're looking to attract a specific one, you'll want to see what their specific host plants are. Got it. Um, but overall, um, the best way to attract them is to be including host plants and nectar sources. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Then the last group of butterflies I'll talk about real quick are skippers. Yeah. Skippers, there are a lot of skippers out there, and they often get overlooked, but they're named skippers because of their kind of skipping flight, right? Okay. And they're a little bit different too. Um, they are butterflies, but they just act a little bit different, the way they hold their wings. And a lot of them, their host plants are gonna be grasses. Mm -hmm. um, some of our native grasses, like this is inland sea oats, um, okay. and then we've got blue stem as yeah. well. Those are some of the host plants for the skippers. How about that? Okay, okay. All right. so kind of went through all the different types. Um, and. As we've talked about before, when you want to attract a certain animal, you want to think bigger than just the food. You mm -hmm. want to think habitat. Mm -hmm. So in addition to your host and nectar plants, you want to include water, okay. shelter, and then the space to raise young is going to be those host plants that you're offering for Got the it. butterflies. Got it. So. Um, one of the ways that you can offer water is what we have kind of set up here. Butterflies don't typically go to standing water. So what they need is a wet surface. So you can do that by either getting a shallow dish. You can add sand with a little bit of water. So it's kind of like a wet sand. Okay. Um, or you can do rocks and just put a thin layer to where they can land on the rocks and get the water underneath. Um, and that's going to be one way to offer puddling areas. Puddling. And that's when they're getting water from the ground. So again, you don't have to fill this up with water, just a little bit. Just a little just bit, a yeah. Little you want to make sure there's something um, that the butterflies can land on, Got it. you know, above the water. Okay. The, la the other thing that butterflies need, like we talked about, it has to be so warm for them to be active. Yeah. So especially in the mornings, they're looking for a sunny spot. And you can offer that by just a big rock in the sunniest part of your yard. And a lot of times they'll visit these to warm up in the mornings. Okay. To warm up, how about that? I, feel, I like that, I think that's pretty cool. You know, that's a lot about butterflies and moths, I guess people just don't know. Right, uh, and you know, one of the things you can do is, I always think when you want to attract an animal, think like that animal, right? Like so, that animal. Okay. so if you think like a butterfly, what you're looking for is big clumps of color so you okay. want to plant in clumps instead of kind of sporadic here and there. So planting in clumps. Yeah. 
And then butterflies, when they are visiting nectar sources or food sources, they need a a flower where they can land, oh, so that it needs like a landing okay. surface. Right. And then, so the asters, yeah. um, uh, cone flowers, those are all really okay. good butterfly nectar sources. And so they have the landing spot, then they can, that curly tongue called a proboscis is what they're unrolling and putting down into the plant to get the nectar. That is good, Mary. And I do wanna ask you one quick question. Sure. So can we talk about just a few threats to our butterflies and moths? Absolutely. So. Butterflies and moths are insects. Sometimes we forget that yeah, um, because yeah. they're so we're we like them so much. But um, so any sort of insecticide, yeah. um, if it's not a specific um, target targeted yeah. pesticide, those all those insecticides are going to affect the butterflies as well. Yeah. Some other threats are um, what we all might find as an attractive plant might not be a good nectar source for mm -hmm. them. So always be thinking about what's native in your area. Mm -hmm. And then also habitat destruction, right? So we talk about this with a lot of animals, but creating these spaces for animals, if you can provide one square foot, right? One square foot is that two to four potted plants on a balcony or a sunny spot in your yard. Um, those are all gonna help um, butterflies, you know, restoring habitat, especially for the migrating ones. That's good, Mary. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to learn about those moths and butterflies, right? Yes. Thank you much. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.